Kalachnikov, he is the man who invented Kalachnikov, but the hero, the one who is fighting with it. So the creator of Facebook, okay, he's not the hero. Okay, he's maybe the smart man that who created, who came up with this idea, but the heroes, the real heroes, who are using Facebook and who really erupted this revolution either in Tunis or Egypt or in Libya now. Uh, as we are witnessing the uh, wind of change, let's also have our own wind of change about the definitions. Uh, Arabs always famous for wasting times about definitions. This is, we call this or we call this. So regardless, it's social network, social whatever, but it's a very important tool for what is going on in the Arab world now. But why, like uh, Facebook, in my opinion, uh, maybe it's uh, dominant on any other social uh, network, maybe because it's very, I mean, easy to use and it has lots of applications. It allows you to do so many things, unlike uh, Twitter. Twitter, for example, you are allowed to write just a few words. So if you want to put any kind of uh, statement, which is like three, four lines, you cannot do it on Twitter. But Twitter is good. It makes you give the news also, like, uh, you know, in, in a few seconds. People, they would know what's going on. Well, you, so, you, you read the tweets, but you, you, you also tweet. Of course, um, you can you, tweet. But you write something, hand, I can tweet what you said. But you're an old, so old school journalist at the same time. I mean, you have a... No, no, um, we're not old school. So what is... What is <laughs> <laughs> to do what? We're not old school. What is, what is, what, what exactly? old school. Old school, that always you start with what the president did, what the president said, what, you know. Okay, that's so old, school, old school. school. Did the Arab world really need these uh, media tools to... Yes, they need. But I'll tell you what, we have an Arab saying says, I'll try to translate it, it's like a straw that broke the camel back. We say it in Arabic for Arab speaking, al lati qasam al al ba'ir. When we say this, it means that already people are boiling like lava in the earth crust. Before Volgano. People are boiling. So when they found uh, like these social networks in their hands, like Facebook, etc., I would say it accelerates and facilitates people who want to make this revolution, to make this change, they find these kind of social networks to contact each other, to call for revolution, to call for demonstration, to call upon people to go on streets, etc. So I wouldn't say that Facebook or any other channel that is the reason for erupting any kind of revolutions. This is, we, we will be unfair with these people who really made this. Mm -hmm. You as a journalist, I mean, this is your business to check your sources. Yeah, exactly. But what, what, what about the 500 million uh, uh, subscribers of Facebook in the world? I mean, do they all do? Or no. isn't it rather... See, uh, as the doctor said, uh, it's uh, not reliable sources, any kind of social networks. Okay, even the, the, the eyewitnesses also, they're not 100% reliable. You have to verify what you receive. That's why the first or the main source for news, for any, uh, I mean, media, it's uh, the correspondence. But how do, you, how do you verify it? I mean, if, if well, you see, there. exactly, how? Because then we have to contact our offices, our correspondents, okay? okay. But, but of course, I cannot, now I can put, uh, there is a coup d'etat in, uh, in, in, in Yemen, and I put now the, my status. There's a coup d'etat in Yemen. And then right. you can say this, no, you have to verify. You contact your correspondent, say, in Facebook, they say that there's a coup d'etat against Al Ali Abdullah Saleh. Is that true? Okay, Simply, so he said, no, this is not true. So well, then we ignore it. It depends also on who is behind or who is using the Facebook. Okay, like if Al Arabiya, for example, um, has its own page, of course you will believe it much more and faster than if I am reading any friend's statement or status on Facebook. Okay. I can take another angle of the discussion about, okay, we are talking about using these kind of social networks, but also we have to put in mind the abusing of it. Well, exactly. Yeah. Th so this I, is, this I, is I don't know if you allow me to give of course, a very of uh, small example on myself, what okay. happened to me 16 months ago. Okay, on my page, you know, I am uh, a poet, so I wrote something about women and love. And there is a religious one, and he was on my list, and he asked me to remove this because it's against the religion. Any poet, he doesn't write 
according to you know what we call on TVs when you dedicate songs, okay? Mm -hmm. Like it's not like a song's dedication. So I write upon what people desire to hear. So I refused. I even ignored him. So what he has done, he, uh, I mean, print screened the, my page on Facebook, and he fabricated a rumor against me, the Al Arabiya TV presenter, the Palestinian one, he said also, Muhammad Abu Abed, uh, put his nude pictures on Facebook and called for a new religion, <laughs> and he is famous for being against Saudis. Well, the guy, must, nice. three, yes. the guy must be a Very stalker nice. who is see, like terrible. See, I mean, see the, three, the three titles, they have no links to each other. Okay, if I call for a new religion, like the Freemasons why, and the why shall I be oh, there naked? You go. <laughs> if, I am, if I put my uh, nude pictures, why to call for a new religion? And if I work in a Saudi channel, how I would be against Saudis? Does that mean my bosses, I have three Saudi bosses, do not know that I am against Saudis? And when you say you are famous for being against Saudis, it means I either wrote a book or articles or at least I appear on TVs and have my own discussions against Saudis. So why I gave, I mean, came up with this example to tell you that unfortunately, and I always criticize Arab mentality in this, that they are easily believe rumors, easily. I mean, maybe from 100, every 100 Arabs, mm. you find one who will not believe and he says, no, we have to verify. Okay, so in one day, in two days, two days, I found this piece of news against me in two days in 250 forums. So what did you do? Do you sue the guy? See, no, I did not, no. I did not do anything. The only thing I no. did, you know, there's no such a thing as bad publicity. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I benefited from it, actually. And many people who used to watch me on TV, they said, we did not know that you are a poet. <laughs> the funny thing, the funny thing, you know, I, you every night, I every night, you know, I just go, uh, go through my friend request and I accept, I ignore, whoever, okay? And I slept at 2 30. I sleep four hours every day. I woke up in the morning. I found 70 friend requests from Saudi. I said, my God, what, what's happening? Maybe <laughs> somebody is suggesting my name. Okay. And then I started the show, Sabah al-Arabi. During the show, I Facebook also. And then 250. And then in, in the afternoon, 1,000 friend requests. So what's going on? So you're not so telling us that, that, that this time you decided to show up naked on, uh, on the show? No, see, right? the, funny, the funny part, the funny part, the funny part, when I, I said I will accept some. So I accepted, one of them was Saudi girl. She said, thank you very much for accepting my request. I'm a big fan of you, but I'm looking for nude pictures. I did not find them. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And I don't know what's happening so far. I don't know, because I don't know. I said, what do you mean? No, I, I am not, I'm, I'm, I'm not a porno star. I'm a TV presenter. She said, you don't know what's happening? I said, no, I don't know. She said, the forums are uh, talking about you. I will send you a link. She sent me a link. OK, they stole one picture of me in a swimming pool. And he put it. And he put some tattoo on me, which is really, uh, I will do it for real, because it's fine with, with the Photoshop. I, I like it. Yeah? And so people, they, they believe. So is that Palestinian guy who hates Saudis and why they leave him on Al Arab, you know? So that, uh, this is what I mean, why I came up with this example, which is, I mean, it happened but with he, me. He becomes more coherent. 16, uh. 16 months ago, they still talk about it. That you means know? that then you are moving from being politicized into politicians. There you go. That's when you, when you think this way, it means that you are also changing, changing not only the regimes, we have to change the culture. I mean, I mm. wrote an article once and I said uh, any uh, society consists of uh, individual uh, dictators, of course, will have dictatorship mm -hmm. to, to be in the regime. But we have to change inside ourselves first well, to be democratic, to accept your opinion, to respect your opinion, you respect my opinion. Unfortunately, what it goes in the Arab world, if I don't like your opinion, I insult you personally. Why? You just argue with him. If you don't have the strong argument, then you shouldn't uh, use this kind of words. Well, let's say this is how it goes in the Arab world, unfortunately. Because I love Arabs, I have to criticize Arabs. When you criticize, it means that you love. That's why, if otherwise, I ignore. Go to hell, everybody, then. <laughs> I don't believe that there is, uh, even since the, the Arabic history, there is an Arab unity. And nobody no said problem. there is. No, I, I'm, telling, ah. I'm trying to come to your point, ah. okay? 
You mean you said, I think you said that it's the problem of government, not people, yeah? This no, no, I said, I said there's pan-Arabism. And I said it's not correct to use the term pan-Arabism. Yeah. Because you're actually, because the people in you the U.S. You with people, what's going on in the other no, Arab countries. Yeah, yeah, not only that, but everywhere else. Iran isn't Arab. I care about the Iranian people taking down the regime yeah. and being free. You know, Israelis aren't Arabs, but if Israelis and Palestinians manage to bring down the government and create a one-state solution, good on them. Yeah, but this is the Arabic schizophrenia. How so? I'll tell you what. I mean, unfortunately, we Arab always unite when there is a massacre. But they are divided when there is a football or uh, huh. whatever. This is for the truth. We shouldn't hide it. I mean, always, unfortunately, in the uh, uh, dramatic situations, Arab are united. Maybe we're when united there is when it's significant. No, How only, about that? But football if isn't that significant. Why? <laughs> well, a, sorry guys, that's uh, a different, let's not go, no, no. To, let's not go to the Al-Ahli Zamalek case. Okay, okay, okay. Not, not, even like football, not even football, Star Academy. This is the level there's of there's discourse no we had before. Now we can actually talk about things that matter racism, and we should actually the racism, embrace that. The racism, just a week ago, you know, I write a, a, a weekly article on our website. One week ago I was talking about this, that the racism in Arabs or between Arabs, it's, it's much more in the West against Arabs. I mean, the Arabs against themselves. They're very racist against themselves. Against each other, you mean? Against each yeah. other, okay? The one from the city is racist against the man from okay. the village. The one from this, uh, you know, tribe is against the other man. You should have been in Tahrir, man. Huh? You should have been in Tahrir. What Tahrir? It's just we have resolved all of this. We have resolved all of this. We have resolved all of this. In a moment, yeah. in a moment of, of, of just of Exactly. It's drama. very, it's for the time being. Okay. And when you finish, Ahli against Zamalik.